some of us are traveling, so, that, you know, that kind of upsets the pets. And then um, I know where I live, we have um, fireworks. Fire, mm-hmm. People pop off firecrackers. That's always a problem with my dogs and even my cats. Understandably, yes. Do you have any tips? Oh, sure. So um, a lot there to answer. I'll start with the fireworks. So for fireworks, what we can do is, actually for anything that causes anxiety in dogs or cats, there are two products that will help. One is called Adaptil. That one's for dogs, and it lowers stress and anxiety to help dogs feel comfortable in their own environment. It's a copy of a naturally occurring pheromone. The one for cats is called Feel Away. Uh, Same thing, helps the pets feel more comfortable in their own environments. So for fireworks, some pets are so terrified that really you should talk to your veterinarian about an anti-anxiety medication that can lower that stress or anxiety. Some pets are like, okay, uh, Adaptil, if we're talking dogs, feel away for cats, a little of that and giving them a place to hide and just waiting until they're over is okay as well. So it depends on what their fear level is. Now, as far as uh, for the holidays you asked about, and going to Nana's house uh, with all those pets, uh, some pets love it. Some pets are so social, they will be happy to do it. Other pets, not so much. And for those pets that are not so much, that are in their own home, so all these people are coming to your home, my advice is to, instead of letting them bark at all these people because they're afraid, or cats hiding in a corner, or maybe shaking even because they're so terrified. Put them in a separate room and close the door to that room, turn on some nice classical music or something so they're hearing that instead of the commotion on the other side of the door. Plug in those pheromone products I spoke of. Here's another great use for those products because we want to lower stress and anxiety. So the one for dogs is called Adaptil. The one for cats is called Feel Away. And now give them something to do. So have the dogs or cats play with toys. You can give them chew toys, uh, treat puzzles that they can work and get treats from. And now they're busy doing that instead of worried about all the stuff going on on the other side of the door. Well, that's all good and well, but what do you do when um, the people that visit have their own pets that they come with? So make yeah. sure that, right, so make sure, first of all, if it's a dog that they're coming with, the best thing to do behaviorally is for all the dogs to meet in neutral territory. So outside the house will work. People take their dogs outside the house, put them on a leash, then someone else comes over with the dog, that dog's on a leash, and they meet in the driveway. That's okay. Ideally, if they met at a neutral location, you know, a couple blocks away at a park, or a mile away, even better, at a park where the dog doesn't typically go and take a short walk together for about 15 minutes, uh, that would be ideal. Then meet again outside in front of the house and then come inside together. But that dog should be, not your dog, your dog lives there, but the other dog should be on a leash for a couple of reasons. First of all, so the dog is under control and not running all over the house to make sure the dog is safe. Uh, not only safe from the other dog, but also, or the other way around, should your dog be an aggressive dog toward that other dog until they get to know one another. But also, I don't want your dog going into the chicken bones in the kitchen. So I want to keep the dog safe from all perspectives, even for the dog's own good. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think my fear more is we're, we're, I've got a husky, and we're, in, we're going to be introducing a shih tzu. And I know my biggest fear is my, my husky, um, she's not aggressive, but she's playful. Yeah. And she might see the tiny little Shih Tzu as a toy. And uh, she, she plays with mongoose in my backyard. They don't fare very well when she plays with them. Mongoose? I, I, you don't yeah, live I in live Africa. In, no, I live in Hawaii. We have mongoose. Wow. And, I had no idea. Really? Yeah. yeah, really. Oh my goodness. And, it must be an introduced say, is that an introduced species to Hawaii? Yes it is. It was introduced many years ago to I don't know, get rid of a rat problem, I believe. It didn't right, it, right. And then the mongoose proliferated. I did not I did not know about that actually. 
Uh, so, so what we want, until you're sure that your dog doesn't mistake the Shih Tzu for a mongoose, is to keep your dog on a leash as well and reward your dog for appropriate behavior. So ask your dog to watch you, give your dog a treat, but keep your dog on a leash in the house, I'd say for, and make sure that dog is on the leash, the Shih Tzu, or behind a closed door. So everybody is safe and I would not unless they're visiting for a very long time, I would not ever let them out in the backyard off leash because once that Shih Tzu begins to run, then your dog's prey drive could kick in. So we want prevent, I'm all about prevention and keeping everybody safe. That's kind of what I'm, I'm after too. I, I told my daughter, I think the Shih Tzu is gonna have to pretty much stay upstairs. I, <laughs> you know? I agree, uh, I think that makes sense. Oh, okay. And I didn't know you had mongoose in Hawaii. Who knew? Uh, yeah, they're they're pests, but um, they they come in and, and they come in our yard, and and my husky thinks that they're the greatest living toy around. <laughs> Are they? Well, you have a husky, you know. Are they on all the islands or just some of the islands? I am really not sure. <laughs> yeah, that's it's interesting. I had I had no idea. But you know what? Um, you've got the right. You've got the right idea because you want to keep everyone safe, and and don't want even the potential of accidents to happen. So doors, leashes. Let's use all these things. Okay. So even if my my husky is actually very well behaved, she's working on her good citizenship right now, and usually I can get her to stand down, but. I'm just afraid that the the prey drive is too high for her. Well, you know? I, I wouldn't take the chance, you know. So it's great that you're going for the American Kennel Club Canine Good Citizen Test. That's what you're referring to. That's a good thing. But this isn't a matter of obedience only. It's also a matter of what your dog is hardwired to do. And it's unlikely that your dog is going to consider a Shih Tzu a mongoose. But again, until you're absolutely certain, I wouldn't take the chance. And this dog may not be with you. So if the dog's only going to be with you a couple days, you won't know. And I just wouldn't take the chance. If the dog's going to be with you a month, you will find out over a course of time and your dog can get adjusted that this is just another dog and maybe something to play with, not play at. But if the dog's only going to be with you a couple days, I, that dog on a leash, your dog on a leash, everybody will be safe. That sounds like a plan. I like it. I do too. Now, for further information about everything I've talked about and more, and more, as they say, happypetholidays.com. That's a great website to go to. Okay. I'll be sure we'll put that on our, our website as well. And Thank you. Tell our, re tell our readers to go check that one out, too, when they have pets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. You have happy holidays yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.